Hey everyone, and welcome to a special episode of Sockets and Cylinders. We are here at Dorman's corporate headquarters. We're going to take a tour of the facility and see some of the different areas where they help develop all the parts to keep you moving. That was really interesting. You think that was interesting? Wait till you see the rapid prototype area we're about to walk into. What happens over here? Here, basically, what we do is we're able to take all of our reverse engineer drawings and print them out as a 3D model. So what I can show you right here really fast is an AC bypass pulley. In the past, before we had rapid prototyping, what we had to do is we had to do all the design and drawing, send that to our contract manufacturers, and we would have to wait. And also, we wouldn't catch any mistakes. Now, with this capability, we're able to print something out that same day test fit it on the vehicle and make sure it works. So this was printed here in this facility? Yes, it was. Right here on this machine? Right on that machine. Pretty cool, huh? That is pretty cool. And it moves, it functions, and you can actually test fit and bolt this on right into a vehicle? Correct. You couldn't leave it on permanently, but you can definitely do a dry run to make sure that it fits and functions properly. That's great. It's got to save you time and save you a whole bunch of money, which then leads off to your customers. It's a huge time saver and really helps us in our research and development. Let's see what's next. Hey guys, as you can hear in the background today, we're here at the Dorman facility. It is an active and fully functioning area in the Dorman complex here in Colmar, Pennsylvania. Today we're with Lester Kovacs, Dorman's Director of Product Ideation. Lester, great to be with you today. Thanks for coming in, Andrew. We're excited to have you here. Yeah, no, we're glad to be here. Today we're going to be talking about loaded knuckles. Lester, why don't you go into a little bit about loaded knuckles versus individual components, how it can save our consumers time and effort when doing a repair. Absolutely. So this is a used loaded knuckle assembly off a 2002-2005 Ford Explorer and also fits the Mercury Mountaineer. Um, essentially what happens is the vehicle owner either comes in for a safety inspection checkup or complaints of noise from the rear of the vehicle. And typically when a technician diagnoses it, they'll find out either the hub or bearing has failed after 8 to 10 years. So when they get in there, traditionally what the technician used to do is they would try to replace just the components. So when they get in there, as you see, this, this uh, unit is pretty rusty. They wind up either um, damaging other components or find out that other components are failed they didn't realize uh, were, were actually failed. So it winds up taking that technician half the day to do a job that could be done much easier. So at Dorman, we listen a lot to the uh, technicians and the voice of the customer. And a lot of technicians wanted an easier way to um, service the hub and bearings on this specific vehicle and other vehicles that are set up like this. So the solution we came up with, Andrew, was this pre-pressed loaded knuckle assembly. These, th these are all the components needed when you're doing the job. So we include the spindle itself in the back, the brake dust shield, the hub, the bearing, the axle nut, and exclusive to Dorman only, we include the parking brake shoes and all the hardware, which is, which is for the rear of the vehicle, of course. Um, and this can at least save two to three hours of installation time, not to mention all the time trying to chase down the other parts as you're going in there, uh, discovering there's other failures on that particular application. So traditionally what you're saying is when somebody would call the parts shop, they would have to order all of those individual components that you were talking about previously and then put them all together. In addition, they might not even know what they need because if they diagnose just a bad hub or bearing, they don't know they may damage one or the other taking it apart or there's things behind the scenes they may not see. And if something like that happens during the repair, it could extend the repair oh, time. Ab absolutely. And imagine if it's a one-bay shop, and now they only have one lift, and that vehicle's stuck on the lift. Or if they're at home doing the job in their driveway, they rip the wheel off, they rip the assembly off, they have all the parts that they thought they needed, and now they don't, and that's they don't a, have a vehicle to get to the parts store. That's a great point. What this is going to do is save everybody a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of trouble. If you're doing the job from home, obviously you don't need any specialized equipment, such as a hub press or anything like that. You could do the job right in your driveway. And uh, you know, that's what Dorman does, is continue to innovate and make the job easier for not only the repair, mechanics, technicians, as well as the DIYers at home. Yep, thank you. We're gonna walk over to the vehicle and uh, work with Nick here in just a moment, and we're gonna learn how to install the fully loaded knuckle. We're out here in the shop in the Dorman Research Facility with Nick D'Alessio, Dorman Certified ASC Master Technician. Nick, thank you for teaching us today on how to do this job. Absolutely, glad to have you. So we're going to go ahead and start getting going with our loaded knuckle project here. So let's talk about first and foremost, safety equipment. First and foremost, safety. Always wear eye protection, 
Um, always make sure your hands are covered and uh, that, that way you can eliminate any type of bumps and bruises. And that's pretty much it, keep it safe, that's number one. Absolutely, safety is absolutely the most important thing, whether you're working at home or you're a mechanic in the shop, being safe and being careful is absolutely the number one priority. There's plenty of pieces and things that come flying off as you're yep. working that could really affect you and your health. So let's start with step one. So loaded knuckle assembly is, a, is a definitely a great part. It allows you to not have to dismantle all the internals uh, that go with the knuckle. Um, so basically you're, you're really just gonna be removing your upper control arm, your lower control arm mounting, your e-brake cable, your brake caliper, and your rotor. Once you remove those items, you're taking the loaded assembly off and reinstalling the new assembly. Very cut and dry, very simple. And we talked about earlier, if you didn't have to do that, there'd be a lot more steps and a lot more work involved Absolutely. in this particular Absolutely, you would need a press, you would need to be able to uh, press the bearing from the hub. Um, a lot more goes into it, and when you're dealing with a rusty vehicle, that's when you really, really save the time to be able to replace it as an entire assembly. So we talked about different points that we have to unbolt, get it out. What are some of the tools we're gonna be using today? So you're gonna need a 36 millimeter for your uh, axle nut. You're gonna need an 18 millimeter. Basically, it's actually pretty simple. A lot of these links all take 18 millimeter uh, nuts and bolts. So you're just gonna need 18 millimeter for that. And then on your lower, you're going to need a 21 millimeter. So other than that, a hammer, uh, maybe to break some stuff loose, and, and, and that's pretty much it. Is there any particular type of hammer, a ball peen hammer, a standard um, hammer? Something with a little bit of weight. Sometimes uh, to get the ball joints loose, you, you really need to strike them pretty hard. So, you know, just a weighted hammer could be a ball peen. Okay. Um, as far as the tools, we got all those covered. Let's go ahead and start getting going. Absolutely. Once you remove your brake caliper, you're going to want to zip tie that or bungee cord it up out of the way so it doesn't put stress on the brake line. Remove the rotor, then all the e-brake cable assembly brackets and linkages from the knuckle. Once we remove the upper control arm nut, you're going to strike the spindle to loosen the ball joint from the knuckle. Do the same for the toe link and lower control arm. Finally, you'll use a hammer or an air hammer or punch to remove the axle from the hub. Make sure you support the knuckle assembly as this is happening. Once the removal is complete, simply bolt back the new loaded knuckle assembly. All right, so we've got our new loaded knuckle all installed on the vehicle. Next step is to just put the tire back on and Slap that bolt tire it up. back on and get it out. All right. Make sure when you're lifting the tire up, you're lifting with your legs and not your back. You don't want to put any additional strain on your body. Again, that falls into the same category of safety. Um, continue to wear your gloves, change gloves as needed if you get any of the anti-seize or any other chemicals on your hands or your gloves or up your arms. Um, and continue again, just to make sure you're monitoring your safety, monitoring your environment checking on your lift if you have it up, double checking your jack stands as you go, and continuing to make sure that safety is your number one priority. So the final step, we're gonna lower the vehicle down and torque the lugs out. Yep, torque it out to factory spec. And you can find the factory spec in your owner's manual. Yep. Thanks for joining us for today's episode of Sockets and Cylinders. Thank you, Nick, thank you, Lester, for teaching us about the products and how to install them on our vehicles. Make sure you guys follow the links for more information from Dorman and Smyth Automotive, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you next time.